All right, we're here at my tiny indoor worm bin. And the last time we were in here, things were a little bit dry, but we fed a juicy feeding and we tried a new technique where I wet down this newspaper. We're gonna go ahead and see how that's doing. And then we're also gonna try an experiment with stale cereal. So as I'm looking in here, right here, it's looking pretty moist. So that's good. It looks like the newspaper has slowly brought up the moisture level in here. So let's go ahead and kind of brush stuff off and look into the feeding zone and see how it's doing. Now on top of that juicy feeding, we also put some dried pulverized oats and some coffee. And it looks like I'm seeing some of that right here along with what looks like a bit of a carrot, very mushy carrot. So we may be feeding a little bit less in here. And right here, this to me looks like some stale coffee that, um, well, very stale because it's extremely moldy. So they didn't quite get to that. We'll kind of break that up a little bit. And it's been nine days since we were in here. Let's go ahead and dive into the feeding zone and see what we have. We'll turn that over and some squirmies right there. And there should be about 600 in here. And we'll see them all throughout as they attack the feeding that we've given them. I'm going to start over here on this side and work our way across. And sure enough, right there, we've got a little bit of a worm ball, which is pretty remarkable for this tiny bin. There is something in the center of this, and wow, you can really see their dark colors. These are all red wigglers, and I'm seeing some coffee grounds on them, but let's see if we can make out what is kind of putting them all together here. There's probably some food at the bottom of this, maybe a strawberry or something, but don't quite see it. Let's go ahead and keep digging around and see how the rest of the bin is doing. It still feels just a little bit dry to me, so we're gonna maybe put just a little bit of that experimental stale cereal in here, but mostly focus on some more of the food. And then we'll probably wet that newspaper down again just to kind of retain some more moisture in here. But they are doing really good. I imagine this other side is going to be a little bit more moist because it was on the top. And here's that little ball of worms right there. Let's go ahead and keep moving over, make our way over. And yeah, there's, there's another ball of worms. This is great. They are, they are definitely making some castings. And I have a lot of bedding in here, so I may just put just a little bit more in as we go along here. And yep, we're hitting the last of the feeding zone. So it looks like that carrot was kind of the only thing that they left. We had some celery in here that I was expecting to see, and I just don't see it. And we also had a tomato top and a little piece of broccoli and some carrot peels. So it looks like they really went through that feeding and kind of just left some of the, the drier coffee grounds, molded coffee grounds. So maybe we'll skip out on our coffee because there's probably enough in here. So let me go ahead and make a little feeding zone here. And then we will start our feeding. All right, I'm just gonna put just a little bit of bedding down just as a habit. But as I'm talking about that, you can see all kinds of worms. They're really well hidden now that they're making more castings, but they are all over the place. And over here is that, that kind of that worm ball. I'm gonna set that over in this corner and then I will lay it on top after we add some food in there. So it's funny, when my boys come home from college, they always request something that they eat over there. They haven't really eaten here, and this was one of them, some Raisin Bran. So we bought them a box, and of course they didn't eat it all. So it is, I think it was during winter break that we bought it, so this stuff is very stale. I've got some whole Raisin Bran right here, and then I pulverized some of the Raisin Bran to include the raisins in here. So I'm gonna add a little bit of each of it on different sides. So right here is gonna be the whole raisin bran, and I've even got some raisins. I'll add a couple more whole raisins right there. And this is just my Magic Bullet blender. It's a really cheap blender, and I blend all kinds of stuff like eggshells, and I use another one to do my coffee grounds, but someone commented that they used it for their eggshells, and then it became cloudy, and I couldn't get it back, and their, their wife wasn't happy with them. So if you're gonna use one of these for your eggshells, just realize that you might get some micro scratches in it. But anyway, we've pulverized, so let's go ahead and put a little bit of this in there. I'm just gonna put it right here on this side, just a little bit of a area there. I don't wanna add too much because 
if it gets bulky, then the water will soak in and then the worms won't really be able to get into it. Kind of like that moldy spot in the coffee that we had there. So there's our two spots of Raisin Bran Whole and Raisin Bran Pulverized. And then on top of that, here is some of the veggies and fruit I'm gonna add. We've got a whole carrot and maybe we'll be able to see if they make any kind of tunnels in this carrot. Sometimes I see the worms eating straight through it. We've got a little bit of a piece of pepper, some kale. We've got a tiny little orange peel. Again, I only have 600 worms, so I'm not gonna go crazy on any of uh, the foods that people say are forbidden or Werbin Legends. So here's a strawberry. We'll add another strawberry. Put an apple in there and a little piece of banana. And you know what? I'm gonna stop right here and I am going to go get some more wet food to put in here to help bring up the moisture level. All right, here's another banana peel and a couple more strawberries. You can see very wet and juicy. And that will just help us bring up the moisture level within just a little bit. All right, next we're just gonna add a little bit of pulverized oats that I've been adding every time, and that's just because they expired in my pantry. And then we're gonna add some grit, which is just pulverized eggshells. And again, I'm just kind of spreading it thinly, and I add it every time, so they have plenty of eggshells. And if I overdo it, no big deal. It just goes in my garden and it doesn't harm the worms. All right, so if you've been watching, it looks like the worms went down here, but I may be able to grab them back up. But meanwhile, I'm just gonna kind of bury this feeding up if you've enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit the like button. I appreciate that. And hit the subscribe icon if you want and the notification bell. That way, you know, if I add more videos and I've got two other bins, I've got an outdoor worm bin where I've got some good experiments right now. I've got a hoagie going in there and a worm tower where I show you how to work one of those if you have one. So let's go ahead and grab our worms, which are right there. And we'll kind of put them on top and they will just kind of dive down into that feeding. And then I'm going to soak the newspaper and we will add that on top. All right, so I think most of them have made their way down, at least under the first layer. So once again, we have really soaked this newspaper to help keep the moisture in here. And what I'm probably gonna do next time, which I probably meant to do this past time, was feed them just a little bit earlier. Maybe we'll do it on day six so that we can keep more moist feedings in here and we'll slow down on the bedding too because I don't want it to get real high right here. So I hope everybody's having a great day and happy vermicomposting, everybody. Take care now.